Hey friends, happy Sunday and welcome back to another week of What's for Dinner. I have one full week of dinners to share with you guys, two of which the recipes are brand new and my family did really enjoy, so I'm excited to share those with you. But mostly, like, we had a pretty easy week this week, not too many new things, um, just Easter and that we were eating leftovers, so... Not too many new things, but I do have two new to share with you. So let's go ahead and get into this week's What's for Dinner. First up was a new recipe. This is called Beef Rigatoni with Creamy Tomato Sauce. I did change it just a little bit, and you can find this on the Lemonade app. I've really been liking finding recipes there. I will have a link to it down below. But I'm just starting off by bringing some salted water to a boil and cooking one box of rigatoni pasta. Then in a skillet, I am going to start cooking my ground beef. You can season this however you like. Whenever I'm cooking like Italian with ground beef I usually do garlic powder, onion salt, Italian seasoning, and a little bit of crushed red pepper and a little bit of salt and pepper and just cook that up until it's completely browned. Then if you have a lot of excess grease you can drain it off. This was pretty lean so I didn't end up draining it but to that I'm going to add one jar of marinara sauce. Added a little bit of water to the jar too to make sure I got it all out and then I blended up 16 ounces, a 16 ounce container of cottage cheese. I did that in my little like personal size blender um, sometimes I do it with the immersion blender too but it definitely got like a lot smoother in the little personal size blender so I would recommend doing that um, so I got that blended up and then I mix that in with the marinara sauce and you get like this really creamy sauce and then I added in my rigatoni and I'm doing this in an oven safe skillet but if you don't have an oven safe skillet, you can transfer this to a casserole dish and then top it with some mozzarella cheese. Original recipe didn't say to do this, but who doesn't like some like bubbly cheese on top? So I did that and then I stuck this in the oven on 350 for about 20 minutes and that was it. If you don't like cottage cheese, I highly recommend trying blending it if you're really interested in, in trying that. But if you don't, uh, you can also sub in ricotta cheese for this. It very much had like lasagna vibes, um, like the texture of the sauce was very similar to lasagna and had like a lasagna taste kind of, but it was delicious. I will definitely make this again. Adding in that cottage cheese gives it more protein and makes it more filling and my family loved it. Saturday, I was doing a lot of prepping for Easter, getting all the food ready that I could, and so I knew I wanted something simple and easy for dinner. So we had BLTs. I even used the pre-cooked bacon for this, just heated it up in the microwave, made it super simple. We did have it on Texas toast this time, which is not something that we usually do, but we really did enjoy. Um, I really liked how the outside was crispy, but you still had like soft bread on the inside because the bread is so thick and we really liked it. Of course, mine is just a BLT, simple, a little bit of mayonnaise, how it should be. Elijah has no tomato because he hates it. Lily has no lettuce because she hates it. And they both have cheese. And Andy's was like a BLT with cheese. And I always talk about this. I am a cheese hater on BLTs. I love cheese on everything else, but I will always be a cheese hater on BLTs. And to go with this, we just had some chips. And that was our simple dinner for Saturday. Sunday was, of course, Easter. I hope that all of you that celebrate had a wonderful day. I made a big lunch for everybody. So this is what we had at two o'clock. Deviled eggs, macaroni salad like my dad used to make, Publix potato salad, some cranberry sauce, some carrots in the crock pot, hash brown casserole, ham, green bean casserole, and then for dessert, I made a homemade carrot cake and some banana pudding. And then we also had some rolls, but those were over on the table. And then 
of course we had this for dinner that night too just kind of leftovers the kids had some ham and cheese sandwiches some chips some leftover fruit and cranberry sauce and elijah a deviled egg lily absolutely hates deviled eggs so none for her my plate looked very similar to the kids this night but i didn't eat as early as they did i think they ate their dinner around six and i don't think i was hungry until like closer to eight so then i forgot to film mine but that was our easter leftover dinner Monday night we were still working on some of those Easter leftovers so what I ended up doing was taking some of the ham and frying it up in a skillet until it got nice and brown and crispy. My dad always used to do this so it reminded me of him and then I made some eggs for everybody. The kids wanted scrambled eggs with cheese. I did a fried egg. Andy ended up making his a little bit later because he wasn't hungry at this time but he made himself a fried egg too so his plate looked similar to mine um, and then we also had some of that Texas toast leftover over, so I gave us some toast as well. Did I say hash brown casserole? I don't remember, but we had hash brown casserole as well. So that used up a good bit of our Easter leftovers. I think we had some for lunch the next day, but then everything was pretty much gone. Tuesday, I was back to cooking. Holidays are really nice because I can like cook a bunch of food and then we can eat leftovers for a couple of days. So it's like a break from cooking. So that's always nice. But Tuesday we had sausage, potatoes, and green beans. This recipe originally came from Kat at Southern Farm and Kitchen. I'm not sure if the video is still up anymore. She changed her channel, um, but I will have the recipe and everything written out down below. This is a family favorite. We love it and we make it all of the time. So I'm starting off by just frying up some smoked sausage and then once it gets browned how i like i'm going to add in some potatoes you could do fresh diced potatoes i prefer to do canned potatoes lately just for convenience sake so i have these diced yellow potatoes that i had never seen before but they were at kroger i drained them and added those in along with whatever seasonings you like i usually do garlic powder and some badia complete and some chicken bouillon so i'm adding that in giving it a good stir and then i'm going to add in three cans of green beans one of which i drained you could drain them all if you like um, just make sure you add in either some water or chicken broth so added those in, added more seasoning, chicken bouillon, half a stick of butter, and then I put a lid on this and let it simmer over a medium heat for about 15 minutes. It doesn't need too long since I'm using canned potatoes. If you're using fresh potatoes, of course, you'd want to cook that until your potatoes are tender. And then I just serve this with some rolls on the side. We usually like to top this with hot sauce, but for some reason I forgot. And then when Andy came home and put hot sauce on his, I was like, oh man, I forgot to put hot sauce on mine. I usually love that, but somehow I forgot. Wednesday night was our other new recipe for the week. These are some honey garlic lemon pepper chicken thighs. So I forgot to hit record, but in this bowl, I have some chicken thighs with some olive oil and then a bunch of seasoning. I did lemon pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, smoked paprika, and salt and pepper. And I'm just going to toss those around now to get them coated really well. And I think I'm going to add a little bit more seasoning because I feel like they needed a little bit more. And then I'm going to heat up a skillet over like a medium heat and get some olive oil in there. And then once that's hot, I'm going to add in my chicken thighs and cook them for about five minutes per side so that they can get a really good sear. Then you want your chicken to be like most of the way cooked. It doesn't have to be completely all the way fully done uh, because you're going to add a sauce to this and let it simmer longer. But you do want it to be really close to all the way done. So once it's really close to being done, then I added in half a stick of butter, the juice of one lemon, a quarter cup of low sodium soy sauce, a quarter cup of honey and then i'm going to be adding in some minced garlic but i almost forgot so you'll see that in a second but i'm going to give that all a good stir let that butter get melted and then we're just going to let this simmer over a medium to medium low heat the sauce is going to thicken up we can spoon that over the chicken turn the chicken around let it get all like cooked in there really well I let this cook for probably about 15 minutes until my chicken was all the way done. 
and this just turned out so good it was sticky and delicious the flavor was so good um the original recipe again came from lemon eight but it wasn't so much a recipe as just like a list of ingredients so i just kind of had to guess which is what i did i was like i guess we'll do like equal parts uh soy sauce and honey and it worked out because this turned out so good so i will have the measurements that i use listed out down below as well as a link back to that original post that i saw on lemon eight and see here you can see that that sauce is really thickened up and it just was so good so i just served this with some craft macaroni and cheese because it's easy and a salad on the side and finally, the last meal of the week was just some tacos. I pulled out one of those like frozen things at the pork carnitas that I pick up at Kroger on clearance and heated that up in the microwave. And then we had cheese and lettuce and some salsa and tomatoes and cilantro and stuff for our tacos, hard shell tacos. And then the kids didn't want rice or beans. They opted instead for us to just do chips and salsa on the side. This is just the Aldi brand salsa, some bite-sized tortilla chips, and then the Taco Bell salsa con queso that you can buy in the jar. And this combination tastes like a Lunchable, the Nacho Lunchable. It's so good, it's like nostalgic. I think I talked about this when we went camping, we had bought this Taco Bell uh, queso, and it just, it tastes exactly like what's in the Nacho Lunchable. And if you like that, definitely recommend you buying that. But that is going to be it for this week's What's for Dinner. I hope that y'all enjoyed it. Let me know down below if you plan on trying any of the recipes that I mentioned, and I hope you'll have a great week, and I will see y'all Tuesday for the grocery haul.